Horizontal rough infiltration, this is some stones in different sizes, five centimeters, two centimeters, one centimeter maybe. So the water is running through this. It's actually a sedimentation. It's not really filtration as such because it's we're talking about stones. So it's not really removing bacteria. But, but on every stone, there's a small sedimentation. It's like a small sedimentation basin if you look at the, the uh, physics of it. So, so it's very effective. Instead of just letting it sediment to the bottom, then the, the particles are sedimenting on the stones. And that means it's very, very effectively in, in removing uh, bacteria. This is only for, for, um, for the community. And uh, it, it looks like this. Again, it's just pre-treated and it's not, uh, has to be followed by some disinfection here. Then there's the slow sand filtration. Um, we have it both the household. Slow sand filtration is filtrating through very fine sand. It's a sand of uh, about between 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 millimeter. Uh, it's very uh, fine sand, so it is draining the, the, the bacteria away. And on the top of the sand, you see the sand, the water is running down. See it running down through the sand here, and then it's collected in this tube here. Uh, on the top is a layer of biofilm on the top of the sand, which is very effective in killing. It's actually other bacteria that is that is killing the, the pathogenic uh, bacteria here. So that most of the treatment is happening in the top. Same here for our community size. It's, it's pretty expensive and, and difficult. Not difficult, but, but somehow advanced to, to manage. Again, you have sand, you have some stones down in the bottom here. Um, but these small filters is, is, is promoted quite in many places. They look like this, the ones that are you can find on the market, nice design. And uh, this, is a, this is a very small slow sand filter. Usually they are, they are quite big. I think still London is using it slow sand filtration, at least up to recently, they, most of their water supply, yeah, sometimes they will, most of their water supply is based on that. Then if you have a pond with uh, dirty water, you can also filtrate it. Again here is a, is a design where you, where you, you pump the water from the pond here, uh, this, can, this pipe is connected to the pond, and then you pump it from up here until the sand, it goes through the sand and some stones, and then you get your clean water out here and you can, um, where you can get it from a tap. So that's what it looks like here. You can see the pipe is out here and they're pumping it up and goes through the sand and then they're digging it up over there. It's a little bit expensive to, to build. So uh, uh, in 2009, we worked a bit in our project in, in West Bengal with a with a more simple version of the palm sand filter here. Mm -hmm. And some students from DTU have designed this and implemented together with local organization here. Uh, we put it inside the water. The water is here. And then the palm sand filter is under the water. So we're using the sand here um, to, to filtrate it. Water can come in both from this, this side and from this side here. And then um, we we pick it up the water, maybe from the bottom here, and uh, pump it up here. And here is the clean water. So there's not, it's a very simple construction. Here you can see at a time where the water level is very low in the pond, uh, you can see how it's constructed um, with, with uh, bricks. And this is the pump here, and in the background you can see the, the filter inside the, the pond here. We just, uh, though, I don't know if anyone here was there in the, uh, last week, uh, Thursday, uh, Mia Uenslea was defending her bachelor thesis, and um, she has investigated this filter five years after, and still, the number of fecal polyforms is, is less than 10, even, even though they have not maintained it. I think the sand is probably a little bit bigger size than it should be, but it has still, after five years, without more or less without maintenance, it is still giving clean water. 
The only thing is that they have protected the, the well, so nobody again is going into the well again. So that seems to be a very simple and, and cheap option here. Then you m may also find a lot of the different um, new uh, membrane technologies. You, uh, membranes is something that is being researched, and, and there are some different designs. I'm not, uh, don't, don't have a total overview of where we are. But the idea is that the water is going in through a small tube with very, very small holes. So it needs to come under some pressure to get out, and then it runs out through the, through the sides here. And, and it's clean, and then the dirty water will continue to the to the other side. So it, you, you're deconcentrating the the bacteria. Um, there are some different designs. A very well known one um, is invest is invented by a Danish based Swiss company, I think. Is the Life Straw? You probably saw that where you can actually suck the water up from very, very dirty water, and inside there's a lot of technology inside, but the main thing is the membrane filter, but there's also some chemicals, and, and uh, uh, I don't think they have told exactly what is there, but also some um, silver things killing the bacteria, so it's a little bit uh, water treatment plant inside such a straw. That is also made for a family version here, where you have the water up, up here, and it's running through a a filter with membranes. In the very advanced case where you have a more motorized pump, you can pump it through um, for a community through, uh, through some bigger uh, reverse osmosis uh, plant, but this is probably <coughs> too advanced. It's not very much use, but the, the, the guys making this uh, straw, this uh, live straw, they're running a, a project in Uganda where they're supplying quite quite a large area with the water from this 